I'm glad you're joining me today. Thank you very much. When my middle son, or my second born son, was uh, about three years old, he came running into our bedroom one night, jumped up into the bed, scooted down into the covers, and was actually shivering. And I could tell something was wrong. I said, son, are you okay? And he said, dad, dad, can you beat up a giant? I said, <laughs> and I didn't think I heard him right. I said, what? He said, can you beat up a giant? I said, sure. He said, no, I mean a giant as big as the Hulk. You remember the Hulk on television? That was real popular back then. But that question, can you beat up a giant big as the Hulk? Does that sound kind of familiar? Lord, there's a giant in my life. His name is finances, divorce, cancer, fear, loneliness, death. Will you please come beat up this giant? Sure it does. All of us have or will. No matter who we are or what we do, how we pray, a giant or two will always find a way to invade our space. So today I want to speak to you about overcoming your giants from the story of David and Goliath found in 1 Samuel 17. Do you know it? The story goes like this. The Philistines, who were the enemies of Israel, were camped on one side of a valley, and the army of Israel was on the other side. And day and night, the Philistines taunted the Israelites, just daring them to fight. Well, one day, their fiercest warrior, the giant Goliath, challenged them to a battle. Choose a man to fight me, and the winner will rule over the loser and become their servants. Well, David, a young teenager, had come to bring food to the soldiers and visit his older brothers who were serving in Israel's army. And when he saw what was happening and how the Israelites were cowering in their trenches while Goliath was taunting them and, and even worse, blaspheming their God, David was incensed. Why are you men sitting here? Why doesn't someone go out and fight that man? And you remember that because of their in, uh, continued inaction, David finally said he would do it. And think about this. David had just been chosen the future king of Israel back in chapter 16. And then immediately in chapter 17, he's confronted with this giant Goliath, which serves as a reminder to us that all of us, even those of us who have chosen to follow God, will at some point face a giant. And some of those giants will appear to be so massive, so ominous, so overwhelming that we will be tempted to cower back and give up. But that's the bad news. The rest of the story here in 1 Samuel is the story of good news. So first of all today, as it relates to overcoming your giants, consider this. Impossibilities are most often illusions. This Goliath was pretty special. For one thing, he was nearly 10 feet tall. Think of basketball. He, he would be head and shoulders taller than any NBA player today. He was almost as tall as the basket itself. And then his armor was about 125 pounds. That's like carrying around a sixth grader. He has a sixth grader of metal on him, and he's carrying a 15-pound sword. So he was big. He was muscular. We'd say today he was swole, right? And he was terrifying to be sure. And for 40 days, this giant pranced about up and down one side of the valley, cursing and taunting the soldiers and blaspheming their God. Ah, but along comes David. And man, how differently he viewed the scenario. Not one time did David see a hopeless situation. Rather, he saw a platform for God to glorify himself. David turned a problem into a possibility, the possibility of his God performing a miracle. You see, David was able to see the giant for what he truly was, this illusion. And that's what we have to do, because what you see is not always what you get. Most people's first response to a giant is fear. Oh no, what will I do? Where can I hide? Where can I run? Oh God, it's just over for me. Or the pessimist in all of us. I knew this would happen, right? But you know what we should do? How we should respond. And, and by the way, this is something that comes through learning over a period of time. What we should do is like David, 
See our pain as a platform. See our problem as a platform that God will use to glorify himself by showing up in great power. Now, these Israelites ran and hunkered down low in their bunkers uh, every day when that giant came calling. They gave in to the illusion of impossibility, while David saw through that impossibility into the possible. Now, listen, when you're going through the fire, when you're really up under it, remember what Jesus said, with man, it is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. So here's the lesson. That giant situation you're facing right now, that's not really actually your issue. Your real issue is how you see the giant and then how you respond to it. So impossibilities are oftentimes illusions. And number two, genuine faith is a giant's worst enemy. So here's this behemoth bully, Goliath, verbally berating Israel, uh, the soldiers, about the physical thrashing they will soon be receiving. And then along comes David, this young teenager, not even old enough to serve in the army, and he says, let me at him. Now let me give you a couple of faith facts, because obviously David was a man of faith. Let me give you a couple of things that have to do with faith, faith and uh, things to remember when you're facing your particular Goliath. The first one is this, faith begins before the giant shows up. In verse 33, it says this, King Saul said to David, you're not able to go fight against this Philistine. You're only a young man. While he has been a man of war since he was young. But David said to Saul, when I was tending my father's sheep, a lion and a bear came to take the flock, but I defended that flock. And then when they came at me, I fought back and killed both the lion and the bear. So the Lord who saved me that day will save me from the hand of the Philistine. Then Saul said to David, go and may the Lord be with you. So David wins the right to face Goliath. But here's the deal. David didn't just all of a sudden develop this kind of faith to kill a giant. Many a day and night he had spent on those Judean hillsides attending his sheep while learning of God and growing in God and battling those predators to protect his flock. So the truth is, David did not slay the giant on this particular day that we have recorded in the Bible. He actually slayed that giant long before in the obscure and outer edges of Bethlehem during those one-on-one -on -one times he had with God. Because it was during those times that God grew David's faith to the place where he knew he could do anything. And hey, it's the same for us. We prepare for giants in our secret and quiet and alone times with God as well. Those times when we pray and meditate over the Word learning what it means to trust and rest in God's promises, where we learn who we are, that we are God's beloved, fully equipped to face and ultimately handle any giant that comes our way. But the danger is this. If I am not determined to learn the ways of God now, before my giant situation comes along, I won't have much of anything to put into practice by means of faith when I need it most. Number two, the second faith factor is that faith succeeds when we fight God's way. Let me read a couple of more verses to you in verse 38. Then Saul dressed David in his own tunic. He put a coat of armor on him and a bronze helmet on his head. David fastened on his sword over the tunic and tried walking around because he was not used to them. I cannot go in these, he said to Saul because I'm not used to them. So he took them off. Then he took his staff in his hand, chose five smooth stones from the stream, put them in his pouch of his shepherd's bag, and with his sling in hand, he approached the Philistine. Now, by the way, King Saul here represents part of the illusion. A person who wants to follow God, yet wants to do everything him or herself. With that in mind, let me give you, let me give you a scenario to, to, to give you some application. See if you can relate to this. 
because this is what many people do. A lot of us do. Here's this giant, this problem, this challenge that comes along, right? And because you're overwhelmed by it, your first response might be, I just can't deal with it. This is too much. I just can't. It's too much. You've been there, right? But then at some point, it's, okay, I need to get it together. I need to fix this. And so you dive in and you try to fix it. But try as you might, things don't work out. Then all of a sudden you have that aha moment. Hey, wait a minute. Maybe I should pray about this. Maybe I should seek God about this. Maybe I should just give that problem to him. And guess what? You gain clarity. You gain peace. Things begin to fall into place. Solutions begin to appear. And finally, your problem is solved. Hip, hip, hooray. Ah, but fast forward a few months later. Another problem comes along. Guess what? The same thing. The same process happens all over again. We worry. We fret. Forgetting all about the fact that God delivered us before and he will surely do it again. In fact, Jesus says, I will never leave you or forsake you. God hasn't brought you this far to leave you now, has he? And that's a rhetorical question. The answer is no, he has not. So David rebuffed Saul's, Saul's advice, and look what happened. In fact, notice what Goliath says to David. As he approached him, Goliath said to David, Am I some dog that you come at me with your little sticks? Come here, he said, and I'll kill you and give your flesh to the birds and the wild animals. Ah, but listen, listen to David's response. I mean, this is just one of the best things you will ever hear. In verse 45, it says, David said to the Philistine, you come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, who you have divide, defied. This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hands and I'll strike you down and cut off your head. Verse 48. As the Philistine, as Goliath, moved closer to attack him, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet him. Reaching into his bag and taking out a stone, he slung it and struck the Philistine on the forehead. The stone sank into his forehead and he fell face down, dead on the ground. Hey, listen, do you want to defeat some of your pesky giants in this 2023? Do you want to turn the tables on your troubles, turn your impossibilities into possibilities? Trust Him. Realize that the battle is the Lord's, not just yours. Let Him fight for you. Trust in Him. Believe Him when He says He will never leave you or forsake you. Rest in Him, because one stone in the hand of a person of faith is worth more than all the pieces of armor on a giant of unbelief. So my son came in the bedroom that night and he, and he was shaking and said, Dad, can you beat up a monster as big as the Hulk? And I said, sure, son. So I got out of bed and started to walk down the hallway and I turned and said, do you want to go with me? He just shook his head and kind of scooted further under the covers with his mom. And so I went down the hallway and I opened the door to his bedroom and I said, giant, you get out of here. And I kind of banged on the wall a couple of times and banged on the door, made some noise, you know. And then I walked back down the hallway and climbed calmly back into bed, put my arm underneath his head and he cradled up next to me. And I said, son, uh, everything's okay. He said, did you get him, dad? I said, I got him. He said, oh, and he just relaxed and rested in the crook of my arm and fell fast asleep. Hey, God still works the same way he did for David and my son. So don't give up. Don't give in. God will see you through and you too will wind up resting in his embrace. Thank you for joining me today. I hope to see you again next week. God bless you. Have a great day, a great week killing those giants this, this week. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.